This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. A leaked initial and not binding draft of U.S. Supreme Court Judge Samuel Alito, stating that the majority opinion from the court would overturn the judgment known as Roe v. Wade, which legalized the right to abortion across the country, has been met with outrage and with condemnation. The leak has been described as an original sin for judicial ethics and one of the greatest breaches of security in the history of the court. If Roe v. Wade were overturned, then each state would be allowed to decide whether to permit, restrict, or ban abortions within its own borders. It is estimated that 26 states would be certain or likely to restrict abortion procedures. On the other hand, pro-abortion states have been taking aggressive action to expand abortions, including, in particular, California, Colorado, Oregon, and Illinois. Senate Democrats introduced on Wednesday the Women's Health Protection Act, which intended to codify Roe v. Wade to guarantee abortion access throughout the nation. But it failed to reach the 60 votes required for it to pass. The final vote was 51 to 49 across party lines, with Democrat Joe Manchin joining the 50 Republicans to vote no. Practicing Catholic politicians like Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, or Chuck Schumer had strongly opposed the proposed court decision, saying that the woman's right to choose must be upheld and that the decision would be one of the worst and most damaging decisions in modern history, even though the Catholic Church prohibits most cases of abortion, focusing thereby on the killing of an innocent unborn child. But Joe Biden said that a woman's right to choose is fundamental. However, his church is not consistent either, and the alleged Pope's declaration, if true, that Joe Biden is a good Catholic, would be hypocritical and shameful. Apart from the egregious violation of ethics and confidentiality, the most shocking but not surprising development has been the outrageous reaction by progressives to the substance and the contents of the leaked draft. Vice President Kamala Harris responded, How dare they tell a woman what she can do and cannot do with her own body? How dare they try to stop her from determining her own future? How dare they try to deny women their rights and their freedoms? Kamala Harris echoed, of course, what Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, and others had said, and they are by no means the only ones. For instance, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said that the right to choose is a woman's right, and a woman's right alone. On the other hand, Joe Biden took quite a different stance in the past when he opposed the Supreme Court's decision to legalize abortion one year after Roe v. Wade. I don't think that a woman has a sole right to say what should happen to her body, he told the Washingtonian in 1974. Not only does Joe Biden's changed position show how extreme the Democrat Party has become, but it is also obvious to me that Joe Biden has become a tool in the hands of the radical left. In our new booklet, The Ten Commandments, we are addressing the issue of abortion. In that free booklet, we prove from the Bible 
that life begins with conception. No matter what progressives and pro-choice proponents may say, the killing of innocent unborn life in the mother's womb is murder in the eyes of God. While those who uphold abortion state foolishly that it is strictly the decision of the mother whether or not to kill her child, the rights of the child and of the father are simply and conveniently ignored. And God is completely forgotten. In our booklet, we also point out the horrible, alarming statistics of abortions in the United States and worldwide. Let me be clear then. Abortion for any reason is murder in the eyes of God, and it should be in your eyes. And with this godly understanding, it is obvious that there can be no exception. And in this area, not only progressive pro-choice proponents, but also conservatives and religious leaders taking the pro-life position fail miserably as well, and that almost universally. To illustrate the point, let me quote from an article by Breitbart dated May 5. Kathy Barnett, a Republican candidate for U.S. Senate in Pennsylvania, released a powerful video in which she discussed being conceived in rape when her mother was just age 11. Barnett affirmed her life has value despite having been the byproduct of a tragic act of violence, stating, in the world, the left desires I would never have been born. Barnett said that her own experience made her become more adamant about the sanctity of life and cautioned people against believing that children like her should be aborted, she said. Even among Christians, even among staunch conservatives, an exception to the rule of being pro-life for many is in the case of rape. And yet, my life has value. Barnett cited her own family, including her husband and children, as evidence of this value. She said, none of this would have happened if the exception to the rule had applied. To me, that is a powerful testimony. And I wholeheartedly agree with her sentiments. Do you? Let me repeat. In God's eyes, every abortion is murder. It is a horrible crime. It can never be justified, regardless of the circumstances. Please ask for our free booklet, The Ten Commandments. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.